In this video, we're going to talk about how to use square roots to solve quadratic equations. So some quadratic equations can be solved by taking the square root of both sides. So for example, if x squared equals a, then x is equal to plus or minus the square root of a. And this method works in situations where you can isolate the square term in a quadratic equation. So for example, if we're solving x squared minus 1 equals 15, we can isolate the square term, which is x squared. We can do that by adding 1 to both sides. And so that gives us x squared equals 15 plus 1, which is 16. So once you have the square term isolated, that means that it's by itself on one side of the equation. You can solve now by taking the square root of both sides. So I take the square root of 16 and the square root of x squared. Well, we have now x equals, and then remember when we take a square root, it's going to be a plus or minus square root. So we have x equals plus or minus the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is 4, so we have x equals plus or minus 4, and that's the solution. So when do you use plus or minus with a square root? And so this is a commonly asked question because sometimes we do the plus or minus, and then sometimes we just take the square root. If you are writing the square root in the process of solving the problem, you have to add in the plus or minus in front. So for example, if we're solving x squared equals 9, we can do that by taking the square root of both sides. Right, so here I'm adding in the square root sign, so that's going to be plus or minus the square root of 9. So that's going to give me x equals plus or minus 3. Okay, because that square root was something that I added in when I was solving. If the square root is already there in the problem, that means to find the principal square root. Okay, so for example, when it says simplify the square root of 81x squared, notice that square root is already written there. So that means I just take the positive square root, so that's going to give me 9x. If it wants you to find the negative root, there will actually be a negative sign written there, okay? So that's how we know we want to find the negative root. So if it says negative square root of 16x squared, that means we're going to have negative 4x, okay? So I just wanted to clarify that because that's one of those commonly asked questions. So another problem-solving tip, when you're solving quadratic equations using the square root property, make sure that you first isolate the square. I know it's very tempting to go ahead and just start taking square roots, but you can't take the square root unless you get that square term by itself on one side of the equation. So just another problem-solving tip, remember that you can undo a square using a square root, okay? So whenever you have that square power by itself, the reason we take the square root of both sides is because a root will undo a power. So here's how we solve quadratics using square roots. We're going to use inverse operations to isolate the square and then take the square root of both sides of the equation. So then we'll use the inverse operations to solve for x. So now let's try solving x squared plus 3 equals 51. So notice that my square term is not isolated because it has this plus 3 with it, right? So let's start off by getting rid of that plus 3. Well, the opposite of plus 3 is to do minus 3. So when I do minus 3 on both sides, that gives me x squared equals 48. Now I can go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So when I take the square root, remember I need to add in that plus or minus. So this is going to give me x equals plus or minus the square root of 48. So whenever we have a radical, we want to make sure if there's a way we can simplify it. 48 is divisible by 16, which is a perfect square, so I can turn this into x equals plus or minus the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. And then the square root of 16 is 4, so this is going to be x equals plus or minus 4 times the square root of 3. Okay, so always remember to simplify whenever possible. So now let's try this example. So we have x minus 3 squared equals 25. So notice that we have a square term that's already isolated, right? There's nothing else with the square. So we're going to go ahead and now take the square root of both sides. So I have the square root of x plus 3 squared equals plus or minus the square root of 25. So when we took that square root, we undid that square. So we have x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 25. Well, the square root of 25 is 5, so we have x plus 3 equals plus or minus 5. Now we can turn this into two separate equations. So this will give us x plus 3 equals 5, right? Because the two equations come from the plus or minus. And x plus 3 equals negative 5. So now we can solve these equations for x. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides. And when I subtract 3 from both sides, we get x equals 2. Okay, that's one of our solutions. And then over here, when we subtract 3 from both sides, 
we get x equals negative 8. Okay, and that is our second solution. So now let's try solving this equation. So here we do have a square term that can be isolated, but it's not because it has that minus 2 with it. So in this very first step, I'm going to go ahead and add 2 to both sides. So when I add 2 to both sides, that's going to give me x minus 1 squared equals 10 plus 2, which is 12. Okay, so now we need to undo that square. So I'm going to do that by taking the square root of both sides. So when I take the square root of both sides, I get x minus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 12. So remember, whenever I have a radical, I want to think about if I can make it better. So the square root of 12, well, I can factor out the square root of 4. So I have plus or minus square root of 4, square root of 3. So that's going to give me x minus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 4 is 2. So we have 2 times the square root of 3. Now I can separate this into two equations. I have x minus 1 equals 2 times the square root of 3. And x minus 1 equals negative 2 times the square root of 3. So now I can solve both these equations. I can do that by adding 1 to both sides. And so that's going to give me x equals 1 plus 2 times the square root of 3. So that's one of my solutions. And then over here, if I add 1 to both sides, that gives us x equals 1 minus 2 square root of 3. And I want you to notice an important relationship between these two solutions. Notice that these two expressions are conjugates. And that's a property that we observe when we're solving quadratic equations. If a radical expression is a solution to a quadratic, then its conjugate is the other solution. So now you can go ahead and pause the video and try doing this example on your own. So here we need to isolate that square term by adding 3 to both sides. And when we do that, we get x plus 1 squared equals 20. Um, then we take the square root of both sides, and we have x plus 1 equals plus or minus square root of 20. Square root of 20 can be made better by factoring out the square root of 4, so we have x plus 1 equals plus or minus 2 square root of 5. Then we just solve this by subtracting 1 from both sides, so we have negative 1 plus or minus 2 square root of 5. So now let's try this example. So we have x plus 5 squared plus 50 equals 18. So what we can do is go ahead and start off by isolating the square term, right? We can do that by subtracting 50 from both sides. So when I subtract 50 from both sides, I'm going to get x plus 5 squared equals 18 minus 50, which is negative 32. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So when we take the square root of both sides, well, notice that I have a negative number under the square root. So this is actually going to have some complex solutions. So this is going to give me x plus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 32. So remember, I'm going to work on simplifying this just like I would simplify any other radical. So I have x plus 5, and then first I'm going to factor out that negative 1. Okay, because that square root of negative 1, I know I can turn into i. So I have x plus 5 equals plus or minus... Let's see, the square root of 32 can be made better by factoring out the square root of 16. I have the square root of 16 times the square root of 2, and the square root of negative 1 is i. So I have x plus 5 equals plus or minus. The square root of 16 is 4, and remember we usually write that i in front of the radicals, so I'm going to turn this into 4i times the square root of 2. Now to solve for x, I just need to go ahead and subtract 5 from both sides, and when I do that, that's going to give me x equals negative 5 plus or minus 4i square root of 2. Okay, and so those are the solutions to this equation. So notice that if I write out these solutions, like if I write them, I have x equals negative 5 plus 4i square root of 2, and I have x equals negative 5 minus 4i square root of 2. Notice the relationship between these two solutions. If a complex number is the solution to a quadratic equation, then its conjugate will also be a solution. So now you can go ahead and pause the video and try doing this example on your own. So in this problem, to isolate the square, we need to start off by subtracting 10 from both sides. So we get x minus 2 squared equals negative 9. And then we take the square root of both sides, so we have x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 9. So that will turn into x minus 2 equals plus or minus 3i, and then we can solve by adding 2 to both sides. So we get x equals 2 plus or minus 3i.
So remember, if the square in a quadratic equation can be isolated, then you can use the square root property to solve the equation. Remember to always first isolate the square before solving the equation.